Kale, broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens, bok choy, cabbage, radishes, brussels sprouts, flax seeds, soy, etc. are all classified as goitrogen-rich foods. And goitrogens are substances that disrupt the production of thyroid hormones by interfering with iodine uptake in the thyroid gland, which can lead to hypothyroidism and goiters. This is a rather extreme study where a woman developed severe hypothyroidism and coma following consumption of roughly 1 to 1.5 kilograms per day of raw bok choy for several months. Now, cooking cruciferous vegetables, for example, can reduce the levels of goitrogens. And this study found that the consumption of 150 grams per day, or five ounces, of cooked Brussels sprouts for four weeks had no adverse effects on thyroid function. So if we're worried about our thyroid function, should we minimize our consumption of goitrogenic foods? Well, let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger and Dr. Joel Furman. There are a number of families of healthy foods, such as flax seeds, cruciferous vegetables, that contain so-called goitrogenic compounds, which can interfere with the uptake of iodine into the thyroid gland. And so if you have marginal iodine intake, if you don't have enough iodine, then these goitrogenic compounds can be a problem. So, But the answer is to not avoid really healthy food. The answer is to make sure you get enough iodine, which is an essential mineral. People that have enough iodine don't need to worry about goitrogenic foods at the normal doses because uh, you have uh, more than enough iodine for your thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone with. It's just this idea that cruciferous vegetables harm the thyroid gland is kind of a ridiculous concept to begin with because the amount of cruciferous vegetables you'd have to eat in a raw form to suppress thyroid function is an astronomical amount. In normal amounts where you have a variety of foods in your diet, you could not harm your thyroid gland at all in any way. In fact, cruciferous vegetable consumption are linked to lower rates of thyroid dysfunction, lower rates of autoimmune thyroiditis, and lower rates of thyroid cancer and thyroid nodules. They actually protect the thyroid, by the way. It would only be a concern if you were iodine deficient, but even then, you'd have to eat an almost an unusually large amount, and we're not advocating people be, be iodine deficient anyway. If we don't have any foods that are exposing enough to iodine, we want to make sure that we have exposure to a um, moderate amount of iodine. The RDI is 150 micrograms a day, so we don't want to take too much iodine, but nor do we want people to be deficient in any way either. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.